Shabbat Shalom. I'm Robert Barr, and this is Reverend Sharon Dittmar. Good to see you again. Thank you. Glad nice you, to be here. Glad you're all here joining us, those watching live and those who are watching in archives. We're delighted you're here. We're going to, as we always do, begin with the reading. If you want to start. Yes. Please. Thanks. Let the Sabbath be a time for believing in what could be and seeing with new eyes. In this serious world, let us take ourselves less seriously. In these harsh times, let us listen for a soothing word. While the world around us unfolds in an instant, let us judge each other a little more slowly. Let the Sabbath shine a light into a corner of ourselves where hope is renewed. Let us remember a reason to be joyful and a way to be gentle. Let the Sabbath be a time for, for opening up. Let us find strength in our dreams and, and trust in our strength. And as you know, we're Robert Barr and Sharon Dittmar, and you're joining us here at ourjewishcommunity.org. We are delighted you're here. Uh, we're delighted for lots of reasons. It's nice to form communities. It's nice to see you. And good see to you see you. We haven't seen you out. I hope you had a good St. Patrick's Day. I did. Good. Um, hope you had one, too, if you're in the state. Well, uh, St. Patrick's Day is a world holiday, so I guess everybody can participate in that one. And we're all Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, what's so nice about ourjewishcommunity.org, there's so many different levels. One, we connect... Uh, through technology. So we create community, which is really remarkable. It, it's really nice. We do look at the, the comments afterwards. You can go back in time. I we? love the comments. I recognize you by your email addresses, right. you know? And what, and so you can do that. If mm -hmm. you didn't, we sometimes we've had to pre-record, which means that you can go back in time and watch the service. We can be with you. If you haven't seen some of the services, you can always sort of scroll down the page. Uh, there was one last week I, I videoed. I don't know if you've seen that. I don't you haven't seen it yet. I, I did it with my brother out in California. So if you didn't see it and sort of curious, you can go back in time. If you want to meet Sharon for the first time, you can go back to one of our very first ones. And, and wonder why he ever invited me back. You can go to the very first, first one. I do wonder sometimes. You can mm -hmm. learn more about Unitarian and universalism and, and some of those things. I know people have questions. So being part of a technological community, we're not just fixed in the 6 o'clock to 6.30 time frame. You can watch us whenever you want. You can leave your comments. We can continue to read them. We can interact with them. We can time shift, which is really wonderful. But more than just the technology and is, is the voice of our JewishCommunity.org. It's a contemporary voice, a bold voice, a, vo a voice that recognizes that we don't have to approach religion in exactly the same way. That We recognize, too, that it's not necessarily even binary, that people have blended identities of religion, and they're, they're coming together. And it together. can shift over time. And it can shift over time. As we like to say, revelation is continuous. Wow. We're, one day we're going to do revelation. <laughs> okay, we're well, not tonight. That's not tonight. So you can explore Judaism, uh, recognize different approaches to, to theology, so it's all the reasons we're here. So we're glad you're here. Whenever you watch, you can always participate, be a part of this community. We're going to continue with our candle lighting, and then we got a discussion for you. Okay. Night seeps up from the ground. Light falls from the stars, distant, icy, ancient beyond all who came before. But the light of the Sabbath is warm. The light of the Sabbath is ours. The light of the Sabbath is of this time, of this place, of lives that know the past only in a dream. As we kindle these lights, we create a place of warmth. As we kindle these lights, we welcome this time for reflection. As we kindle these lights, we stake our claim. And while the lights burn, the time is ours. Baruch or ba'olam, blessed is the light within the world. Baruch or ba'adam, blessed is the light within each person. Baruch or ba'shabbat. Blessed is the light of the Sabbath. And some of you may remember that the Unitarian uh, Universalist, the movement, mm -hmm. has a, have been doing different themes yep. on different monthly months, themes. Different monthly themes. And we've talked about some. We talked about mm -hmm. wonder. And you were doing the theme of resilience this month. Yes, March was resilience. And I don't know the connection. I'm trying to figure, I don't know why March was resilience. Some of them made sense to me, but I don't know. But I liked it when you mentioned when we were talking about tonight, you said resilience. And last week, if you didn't see it, I, as I said, I did a, a service with my brother out in California. It's actually very different. It's in front of a fireplace. and not wearing a... Do you have a cardigan on? Uh, no, I had a... I a, wish you did. No, no, it wasn't quite. But I did have a, a, a casual shirt with a long sleeve undershirt. A it's, pipe? No pipe. It was oh. very cold. They live, in a, they live up in the mountains. It was chilly. And we talked about his stroke and his response mm -hmm. to it. And, it. and really, and people made comments, because I watched the comments online about you know, how he's doing and about resilience. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I, 
I did a, a, another service that we'll stream in a couple of weeks about his approach to religion. And when you, because a lot of people wanted to ask about how, how religion factored into his. Mm -hmm. And so when you said resilience, I went, that, that really is an important topic. Mm -hmm. Because all of us face challenges in life. Some of us face greater challenges and some of us face lesser challenges. But challenge is part of life. So I, I was really curious when you, when you raised it. I went, this is a great topic. It really speaks to what I was thinking about. So I'm just curious. Give us a, give us a little framework. Let me All right. delve into it. So the definition we received in our materials on resilience was to reassume a form after being bent out of shape or to uh, resume a new form. Reass wait a second. I'm just so surprised. So re reassume, reassume a form after being bent out of shape. shape. So, form. you know, it's sort of like you can bend but not bend but not break, break. I think. It. And um, there was a lot of wonderful materials about we think of individuals as resilient, but it's also communities of resilience. Sure. So we are resilient within ourselves. We're also resilient between ourselves, which is very important. Okay. Uh, and I thought that that was a wonderful theme, too, that they uplifted. There was a lot of materials they included. I liked the seven habits of highly resilient people, which I found really interesting. Sure. What are they? Sure. I'm not going to remember all seven. Um, one was uh, resilient people tend to be able to look at both the good and the bad. They don't lie about either. Oh. They're very self-aware. They're like, yeah, this is what's bad. This is what's good. Right. Right. Um, they find little things to be grateful for. So they talk about also having to, you need to have a positivity ratio. So if you always say negative things, <laughs> think negative things, you will feel negatively. Sure. But if you can find something, that's why like little areas of gratitude, uh, finding areas of beauty, even when life is hard, really matter. Um, so keeping a positivity ratio. T ratio, even when things are hard. I loved this one, rejecting rejection. So we all get rejected and it hurts, but rejecting it, it's not necessarily a mandate on your personality, character or worth, mm. right? So let it wash off you. I really liked that one. Mm. Uh, and and I clearly too, they're not, I just so stop, for, stop for a second. It's not like in every situation you'd use each one of these. No. Because, you know, re you, rejecting rejection probably is an interpersonal, recognizing the reality of the situation, the good and the bad is, if you're sick, it's, it's not pretending you're not sick. It's, right. it's saying, yes, this is crappy or this is bad, but here's the positive family or whatever it is. So each, so it's not like everyone is used in every situation. No, and they talked about realistic optimism too, you know, being optimistic but realistic. So it doesn't, it's not necessarily false optimism. Right. And here's, I, I did more research on resilience and this was my favorite finding. Some people seem to be born more resilient than others. I just talked to somebody who it, said I was born strong. And I went, and I, I went hmm. Uh, the research seems to indicate that they've done research on children and why do certain children respond in certain situations. So when researchers went out, they would go to schools and they would look for, they would ask the administrators, tell me about a child in your school who's succeeding, although you're rather surprised. And these children always existed. Now, the <sighs> research so indicates, though, that any person can find too many situations of burden and woe and lose their resilience. So even these incredibly resilient children can struggle. Here's the good news. Not all of us are born so resilient, you can require it. Um, and often you don't know how resilient you are until you face a challenge. And so the point is to not avoid the challenge, but to address the challenge to walk in and walk through. Right. And I, I loved, I asked members of my congregation when I preached on resilience first for their stories, and I got wonderful stories from my members. You know, one, just a wonderful story about how everything went wrong in her life, her marriage, her job, her health. And she, she wrote about being totally unprepared for it. But then as you listened to how she had persevered and survived, this woman who had really no faith in herself acquired an understanding of her own resilience and then applied it in the future because it's like once you've learned it once you can We're, apply it sure, again. Sure, life, sure. life will roll you again, right? Right. It's not, yeah, it's not, yeah. Yeah, it's not just, and that's the other thing. It, you know, some people say, well, I got, why, why is it happening to me? Because that's life. And it's not fair because some people have harder lives than, than others, others, and I don't know why. It just, and, 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 that, and there is no answer to that why. So reject the reject. It's not personal. It's not about it's you. Right. I mean, the it's random. And, and it's, it's random. It's the good things are random, oftentimes too. I mean, you might work hard, but sometimes, Absolutely. right? You know, winning. The, there are things that are random. You know, who you meet is random. If you have a, a chance encounter with the person you fall in love with, if you, it's a chance encounter. You it, may net it, right? It, it is random that I was born in a household that had food, clothing, and shelter. Right. And in fact, I think it was Warren Buffett. I think it's Warren Buffett. It, it, somebody, if you you can somebody can Google this. He said. 
he talked about that. What would you, that we're fortunate that those of us, how, think about the, 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 the sort of the luck of birth, that we're, that we're born in a country that has enough food, that has running water, that has sanitation, that, ha that we're born into opportunity. And what responsibility comes along with that chance that we, we are fortunate enough to be that? Because there, if we had been born in another place or another time, our worlds could have been incredibly different. Although I also think, for example, that you can be born in the United States and have everything stacked against you. You mm -hmm. can grow up in a shack without R running water. Right. You can live in an abusive household. Right. I mean, and there are people other places in the world that, you know. Are uh, born into luxury as well. I mean, it's not or just or America. born right. into poverty, but have much more stable communities and a sense of happiness and mm -hmm. well-being than sometimes we do. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it varies. Right. But, and mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm not giving the quote right, but it was about to appreciate the fact if you were born into a good situation that you were born into a good situation and it was that absolutely. was a, that was absolute luck and that none of us you know w none of us got to pick who our parents were or the family were, totally right and i like i like the gratitude moments too i think this is a big deal i'm uh we actually pray before dinner i know this will surprise you <laughs> Oh, I hope the food is, Mom, like, cooked it okay? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. And it was because my okay, stepson tasty. thought it was so funny. I was a minister. Um, he was a preteen when I married his father that he came home one day as a joke and said, shouldn't we pray before dinner? And I said, that's a great idea. And then I started doing it, and now it's stuck. But it's a short prayer, and I ask everyone at the end to say one thing they're grateful for. And it, my purpose is the positivity ratio, because I can come home in a bad mood. Anyone in my family can come home in a bad mood. Things can have gone wrong. You can be upset by world news. I'm certain there's one great thing, like the sky was blue today, the flowers started to bloom, um, you saw something really funny. I mean, mm, right. there's always something out there that is still beautiful and to be grateful for and to find it. Your life can still be incredibly hard, mm -hmm. but there are just pockets that break through of kind yeah. of that awe and wonder, so take them when you find them. Take them when you find them, and I think that's also why it's interesting, because we were talking about, I think another thing is humor. I think I you, love humor. And I and I see and I think humor really is about looking out a different window. I think it, it allows you or allows a person in the moment of crisis also to look out and see something that is different, unexpected. And that's what laughter is, right? That's what the joke is. The joke is when it's different than you expected it. And in the worst situations, in fact, in the last service or the, the service I streamed last week with my brother, we talked about in the midst of what was an awful situation, he was dying mm -hmm. at the time. I mean, we, they didn't know he was going to survive. We were laughing, he said, more than, in fact, and people couldn't quite deal with that. They didn't know mm -hmm. how a group of people in this dire situation, but it was about resiliency. It was about finding the unexpected in the awful. So I think all these things, yes. gratitude is about seeing that really easily, but uh, um, Laughter is seeing the ironic, which is also then moves you over in a different place and allows you to perceive the world anew. Because I personally feel that the glass is actually always half empty and half, half full, and I find that actually funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's how I feel about life. Right. That's, and, and that gives you the ability to face it. And then, you know, and you know, those of us who are fortunate should accept good fortune, too, good, and not yes. even feel guilty about it. No. You know, There's and, no, it doesn't help anyone. You okay. feeling guilty helps no one. It right. helps nothing. It doesn't help to feel shamed. And this is the other thing about resilience. Like I said, I said to my members, you know, we tend to think, you know, bring yourself up by your bootstraps. And if things, this is very American, for those of you who aren't American. We're all like closet Calvinists in our own way. We haven't ditched that, you know. And I always tell them, leave your closet Calvinist at the door. Not everyone can pull themselves up with right. the bootstraps. It doesn't mean you're a failure. You know, don't and take the world's mandate on you personally right. if things don't go well right and everybody who's resilient doesn't necessarily survive no I mean and I think that that's important too there was an interesting we were talking a little bit before the service about Holocaust survivors and resilience here the Holocaust not necessarily survivors and there's a really interesting there's a book mouse I don't know if you ever read oh that. yes okay and in graphic it, novel graphic novel big fan of graphic right. novels and it's a there's two parts but the <sighs> when um Art, the guy who wrote it, went to a therapist because his father was a survivor. Yeah. So true, he, he, he captured his family's life. And one of the conversations that I remember that the, he had with the therapist, or the therapist had, he said, don't assume that everyone who survived was necessarily more resilient than those who no. died. He said it had nothing to do with it. Sometimes it was luck. Somebody who... Absolutely. 
like, and he said, and and just because someone survived, don't hold. And it was really, it was about how we held them in certain places versus and forgetting and sort of judging them differently than those who didn't. And it was a very powerful because it was about you know survival sometimes is a chance. Well. Um, in the research on children, the first factor of what makes resilient children, here it is, luck. Yeah. <laughs> that one person loved you, that one person mentored you. I mean, the, the first factor of making these children resilient was luck. Wow. And I think it's important <laughs> to talk about that. And, 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 because, and, it, and this is also why theology becomes important. Well, and I don't think death is a failure. We're all going to die. It's not oh, a failure. Really? <laughs> but honestly, no, people no, no, are no, like, well, they bad. died. You know, I'm of like, of course. I mean, people, we that, all going to die. Doesn't mean a, anyone failed because they died. It just means that they. That's offensive to me to think that. Right. I think, well, I think, it is, and this is where theology becomes important, yes. right? Because this is about, you know, somebody who says, and we're going to, you know, oh, you were blessed, which implies that somebody else was cursed. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm Isn't very the, uncomfortable with my prayers save someone. I can't believe. Right. I mean, I find that offensive. And, and rather than saying, there is random, luck is randomness. That's one person is in the right, in, in that place, and somebody isn't. The person who's not in that place is no less, uh, they're, they're no less of a human being because they were born to the wrong place or the wrong time or the wrong moment. To see, to see them as less and they're not blessed is to somehow reduce them. And, and I find that's why theology to me becomes so important in this I conversation. Agree. And the language of, luck to me is much more comfortable than the language of blessed because I, I think yes because there's a there's something uh, there's a value judgment oftentimes yeah. with blessed um and that goes with that the person who dies was somehow less worthy <laughs> than the person who survived they know they were both worthy that kind of makes me want to leap out of my skin yeah and it really <laughs> very upsetting to me because sometimes people just it, it's unfortunate they, or they, they suffer it's not it, it's, it's, not it's almost fault. blaming right it's blaming the victim well there's all and there's some some new age <laughs> stuff about you know where if, if you if you're carrying this you're going to get sick it's it's almost blaming the victim oh, for their own illness yes right did it, your brother face that did he get that from people he he got, and well, we're actually going to do a service about it. There were people who were bothered that he didn't, wasn't as religious. That's a, I'm just giving away part of the car. He's very comfortable to what we do here. So there were people who were upset with him because they wanted him to believe. They wanted him to say, I, I was God save me. And, and he, in his show, at the end of his show, because you're talking about resilience, he talks about when life throws you, and I can't use the language because we're on air, mm. bad things, ex recognize that what they are. Don't pretend that stuff isn't crap. Um, I Rabbi said, like, Barr. Yeah, yeah. But he also says life gives you good things. So recognize both of them. But somebody wanted him to be, say, well, oh, God was on your side. And it was really because <clears throat> when you're in the hospital and, and you hear a code blue, the person down the hall is no less worthy of survival than you are yes. typically, right? Yeah. And, and so theology, they wanted more from him. And some people got upset. He said there was somebody who, when they said, oh, I prayed for you, he went, okay, thanks. And they wanted more, like, appreciation. Like, you, you, it was because of me. It's like, hey, you know, no. Something I also want to uplift about resilience is um, relationship really helps. So the research shows, like, connecting with people sure. really helps that around resilience. It helps as you age to not isolate but to engage. Um, so, pe so people who can form relationships, it helps with resilience. It helps with happiness. It helps... Um, foster and, optimism, right. and I alleviate actually, depression, et cetera. Sorry, oh, I was going to go. Yeah, and I think that that's the reason why people perceive. I think that's the effectiveness of prayer, actually. That yeah, when people you're, know, you feel connected. You feel connected. That's why it works. I think what we need to do is connect more people to more people. It has nothing to do with theology. It has to do with the sense of I'm not alone. I'm a valued person because I care about you. Yes. Uh, and and that other people care about you. And if you're not doing well or I'm not doing well, it's nice to know that I'm not isolated. And it, and it gives me a reason to continue going because there's other people who value the fact that I'm around. And this means everyone's streaming online right now. You're engaging in resilience, right? I know you chat amongst yourselves. You, you're your own community. You might have never seen one another, but you are. Right. Because people do ask each other about help. I've seen that in oh, your chat. Oh, yes. It's really touching. I haven't seen you in a while. Or right. how so-and-so. Yes. Resiliency. And this is this is also sort of, sort of touching on that is communities formed in different ways. You, we don't have to have the same proximity to each other. That we're, we're sitting close and you're sitting further away. But when we know that somebody cares about us, it, it gives us, there is that 
spark of energy, excitement, a sense of ego that feels I'm, I'm valued as a being, yeah. gives me a reason to get up, gives me a reason to do what I do, to connect, to join. So I think it's very interesting that this is, I hadn't thought about re building resiliency through this. And yes. it allows us then to face the bigger challenges. Well, and f I bet the people who watch this are religious minorities, not only because you're Jewish and self-identify in that way, but the theology here, you're a minority within Judaism. Right. And so no, actually, we're probably not. We're just, <laughs> I think we are. I just, we, but, just, we just talk about it. <laughs> but to build community around that, you know, so I bet a lot of the people who watch this feel kind of isolated. They might not share the same religious ideas with even family members, sure. but when they, you know, they email amongst one another, they, they know they're not the only one. Oh, that's interesting. So great. So yes. email us, be yes. connected, form community, form resilience, write your own story of resilience. Send that. I'd be really interested. Share it with us. Oh, that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of, I mean, I am, I, there are times that I am staggered by people's strength. Yeah, and then and then just so you don't get worried, that's not you. Most people don't know their own strength. Sometimes I, you have to go back and think about it. Well, there was it was interesting. <laughs> One of the, the the neuropsychologists who worked with my brother, who he talks about in the uh, in in our in the show and also on the, online, who was really incredibly important uh, to him when he was really in his darkest moment, mm. said to him. It's only when you're in, he, he, people, a human being is like a tea bag. It's only when you're in hot water does your real essence come out. Hmm. When you're, and it's actually a quote from uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, there have been different oh, wow. people, that really when you're in the most difficult of challenges and you're really being steeped and really boiled, if you will, it's only then you really know what you have. When, when things are easy, we're not challenged to live up to who we are necessarily. It's when it's yes. challenging that we go, wow. And that's what we oftentimes people, I think people are oftentimes struck by themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I think you're right. I don't think most of us know what we can do because we don't, we've never had to do it. No. And most of us don't take the time to reflect back either. I mean, you might have had a very hard experience parenting or growing up or in a relationship. I mean, so sometimes you're just like, well, that's done. Thankfully, I survived. But you don't really realize the resilience yeah. it took to continue to, your journey through that. Or you minimize it because it was you. Yes. So you say, oh, that was not a big deal. I, got, I was able to get through that. And you look at somebody else or somebody else looking at you would go, how did you do that? Because yes. you're looking through your own eyes and you're looking through your own sense yeah. of ego. And you go, ah, if I could do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. Where other people might say, how did you do that? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Wow, I like this. I think, it's a great, I think that was a great... Resilience. Resilience. Did you, did, was there a text that you worked off of? No, not a religious one. I, I, oh, there was this beautiful reading by the elders of the Hopi Nation that I did use. Um, we, we try to be very careful to not engage in my congregation in cultural misappropriation. You have to be very careful when you apply something from another tradition or religion. But there is wisdom in other religions and traditions, and so we want to hear it. It's this beautiful reading about everyone finds themselves in the river. And when you do, you'll get torn apart if you hold onto the banks, and you must make yourself way to the river and keep your head above the river and find out who's in there with you and celebrate. Wow. And then it says at the end, we are the ones essentially we've been waiting for. It's this beautiful reading. I used that reading. That's nice. I remember it was that's great. Well, thank you. That was a good day. Appreciate it. We're going to read the hollow reading. Uh, how, how will I find the hollow this evening, Rabbi Barr? By looking underneath. <laughs> will we not be taking the cover off it? No, we can take the cover off. It's pretty good. Well, last week, so last week we were going to use a hero because we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi Barr, the next time I no, come we're in, the, April. No, we, were in the, we were in the mountains. We were in the mountains. So okay, okay, gonna, okay. That's fine. April, though, New Holler, right? You want it. I know you do. You yeah. yearn for it. I'll tell you how good it smells next month. Okay, well, this is not a bad one. This is, this is, this is not pretty. The squirrels haven't nibbled on it. Not it yet. Very no, good. No, no, it's very nice. So, All you right. want to read the Holler? Yes. From <laughs> Since you made such a big deal about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are very interested in the Holler. Friends, you let me know if you're interested in the Holler. I am too. <laughs> You let Rabbi Bar know. From the earth, a seed harbored in darkness, from heat and cold and wet and dry, to wind and air and rain. Golden ground flower from wheat with water and yeast active and alive. Always something saved from the earth's sweetness and salt, from nature tamed oil and eggs, mixed and rested in darkness and warmth, kneaded smooth, made right by touch, hands that shape. Mouths that want from the earth are hala, our warmth. Baruch HaMalkapenu, blessed is the work of our hands. Baruch HaZon HaAdam, blessed is the vision of our mind. Baruch Lechem HaAret, blessed is the bread of the earth. And then even some wine or some juice. Join with me as we lift the cup 
as a tribute to our past, as a, as a blessing for the future. May the allure of its untold flavors beckon us forever to keep uncovering new branches, new roots that hold us together. Tonight, as we, stay, as we welcome the Shabbat, ooh, excuse me, we, stay, we find time to spend in our own quiet company and listen to the calling of our hearts. Ruhim ha'chayim ba'olam, blessed is the life within the world. Ruhim ha'chayim ba'adam, blessed is the life within each person. Say l'chayim. L'chayim. The life. Of course they love the challah. It's the bread of life. Rabbi. Look the wine. Juice. <laughs> Rabbi, the, the wine is good too, but. The bread. The bread. Hey. It's the bread. I baked it myself. Oh, it's the bread. I didn't break it. Okay, cool. Well, thanks. So you can chat about your challah. The hard part is finding good challah. So in the mountains of Southern California, there wasn't. So what'd you do? We use a hero. My brother said, <laughs> my brother said you know, a year, you know, like Mexican. And he said, ah, with a C-H, it's like challah. <laughs> I like it. that humor, resilience. Right? You found the bread of life. We found the bread of life. It was, it was covered with uh, cinnamon and, and sugar, but it was still good. <laughs> um, so announcements. Next week, next week, which is uh, March 25th, Rabbi Ophir Sabbath Beit Halachmi is going to be with, with me, with us. Some of you have met Ophir before. Ophir is a rabbi trained in Israel. I don't know if you ever met mm -mm. him. We, we were trying to all get together. I was trying to get... It's been hard. We're going to do that still. Okay. Uh, so Ophir is, a, is, a, is an artist, trained as an artist mm. and ordained as a rabbi, living in Cincinnati. It's been very interesting. He shared a conversation with us last time about Hanukkah and sort of the early mm. parts of Hanukkah. It was really fun. We talked, about, uh, we talked about Israeli identity, Jewish identity. So we're going to continue a conversation with him. So join us next week. Also, if you have not done this, you need to do this. You need to go to Cincinnati ojc.org again cincinnati ojc.org it's uh it's an easiest way to get there it'll take you and you'll have a chance to uh look at our purim videos we have i have to say they're brilliant i love purim you love well it's fun oh the you parades, have to, the parades, parades yeah well you have to watch on. our purim stuff you'll find you'll see purim in a whole new light oh okay i'm ready you're ready it's pretty tough so right. we have two videos Is it bold judaism uh, is it bold Judaism? Bold. I hope it's bold. Well, we deal with the fact about sexual coercion. Oh, wow. That's bold. There's a lot of violence in, in Purim. There's a lot of drunkenness. Lots I like of it. Sex trafficking. Mm. It's a when you read the text as it's written. You really read it. You didn't just celebrate the holiday traditions. Right. And one of the challenges. So go look and look at the resource guide that's online. Because what we wow. try also wanted to do, you may want to use this if you ever do anything with Purim. Because what we wanted to do was we wanted to give the adults an accurate understanding of the legend of how it actually what was really going on in the legend and simultaneously offer them if they want if they were interacting with children how they could what other what elements of the holiday might be uh, appropriated to use with children and not to confuse the two because oftentimes the the ugliness is is sort of skirted around without recognizing what you're skirting around. So we try to balance both. So take a look at our resource guide. It's there at CincinnatiOJC.org. And um, so are the two videos. If you go to the, the next page, the Purim page, uh, you can watch them. You can also find us on, the, uh, on Cincinnati on our Facebook page. You go to you know, Facebook backslash ourjewishcommunity.org. It's, it's also there. Take a look. Please, please share that stuff with each other, with mm. each other, with your friends. It really is helpful for us because it's part of a program that we've been involved in where we're trying to produce bold Judaism and Judaism just like we're talking about because there are lots of folks out there who don't have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. to experience this kind of Judaism. So do that uh, and uh, share what we're doing. Go to our Facebook page, join us for services, all those things. And we close with our final words. May we know blessings those who are near. Thanks for being here again. You're welcome. Those blessings those who are far. Thank you for being here as well. And may the Sabbath bring its goodness to everyone soon, wherever they are. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.